Hey, have you ever wondered what the difference between cartilage in the knee and a meniscus is? This is a question that we get all the time, and I'm gonna explain the exact difference between the two so that you can find out if your problem is more just regular knee cartilage or if it's more of a meniscus issue. Real quick, my name is Dr. David Midoff, and I'm a specialist physical therapist over at El Paso Manual Physical Therapy. And this channel is dedicated to helping people stay healthy, active, and mobile while avoiding an unnecessary surgery, injections, and medication. Please hit subscribe and turn on your notifications so that you don't miss any helpful videos that we put out each and every week. So let's get to it. The knee has tons of different things in it. Knee cartilage is one thing and knee meniscus is another thing. Now, just to be clear, cartilage is the bigger umbrella term and meniscus is a type of cartilage. So when you talk about the meniscus, it's actually a type of cartilage, it's cartilage, but it's shaped a certain way and it's got a certain purpose that's a little bit different from normal cartilage like we see. Now, cartilage is just a soft, it's kind of hard, but it's, it's more soft, it's very firm um, tissue that's on the end of bones and it cushions bones together. And you have cartilage all over your body, inside your finger joints, right where the bones meet, where anywhere there's a joint, there's generally going to be cartilage. There's a few exceptions, but for the most part, you've got cartilage everywhere. There's two bones that meet together in your wrists, in your elbows, and of course, in your knees. There's tons of cartilage in the knees. But what's unique about the meniscus is it's more like a disc. If you think about the discs in the spine, so I've got my, my skeleton here. You've got the vertebrae right here, and then you've got the disc, which is also a type of cartilage that cushions between the two bones. It's the same thing over in a knee. But what's unique about the cartilage that sits between the, the bones here is it has to support the entire weight of your body above the, the thigh bone as you move. So it's shaped a certain way, that it's got its own name, we've got special tests for it, it gets injured differently than other cartilage tissue. So that's why we separate out the meniscus apart from all the other cartilage. Now just to give you a, a more simple picture of it, so let's talk about the difference between knee cartilage and the meniscus. I'm gonna move in a bit here. As you can see, I've, I've drawn, this is a side view of the thigh bones and the knee bones. So here's the thigh bone right here, that's the kneecap, and this is the shin bone, all in blue. In orange right here is the meniscus, and its job is to cushion the thigh bone and all the weight above it on the shin bone and the foot. So it's, it's more of a cushion than anything else, kind of like the discs in the spine. When there's abnormal forces going through the knee because of muscle imbalances, because of the way that you sit, the way that you walk, the way that you move, then that cushion, that meniscus, that orange tissue right there can get damaged. It can get irritated. Different things can happen to it. It can tear. The cartilage lining on the, in, in red right here, let me use my pen to point, the cartilage lining in red on the back of the kneecap and on the end of the thigh bone is what we typically talk about as cartilage. Now it's possible to damage any of these and they happen differently. So um, the, the sensations that people get from a damaged meniscus versus damaged cartilage on the end of the thigh bone and on the back of the kneecap are kind of different. So as you can see on the, the actual bones here, the kneecap, the kneecap is right here and right behind where the kneecap touches the thigh bone, there's cartilage right in there. And those two surfaces are covered in cartilage and they rub on each other so they can slide frictionless. So there can be as little friction as possible so that the knee can move freely and you can do all your everyday activities. Well, when that gets damaged, you can get a little bit rough and generally it will sound a bit crunchy whenever you bend your knee. People that are in their 30s, 40s, or beyond will sometimes start to get little crunchies, little sounds that the knees make as they bend them. Sometimes it's painful, sometimes it's not. Often it's not painful. And what that usually is, is the cartilage behind the kneecap, either on the thigh bone or on the kneecap itself on the back, is just a little bumpy or rough and it's making, there's more friction than there's supposed to be, so it's making some noise whenever the knee goes to bend and straighten. But the meniscus itself typically doesn't make a whole lot of noise unless there's a tear. If there's a tear, you'll hear more like a clunk or a thud. Uh, a, 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 sing, a single popping sound is what usually happens, not a bunch of little crunchy sounds. Now, 
some sensors paint with it, some sensors not, and it's not always going to be a tear if you get a pop or a click. It could be that the joint's just a little bit stuck and it'll pop once or click once and it's free and you may never have a meniscus tear. But if you get repetitive, loud clicking and popping, not a crunching, it's different, then you're looking at more of a meniscus damage or meniscus tear possibly depending on, on you getting checked out with an MRI. Um, there are special tests that a, a physical therapist like me can do to isolate, isolate out the meniscus. And with, if the test is done well, it's got pretty decent accuracy when compared to a, a, an MRI. Of course, the gold standard is surgically going in with the camera and looking at the meniscus to see if there's any tears. But you don't want to expose yourself to surgery unless you have to have something fixed and there's a good shot that it's torn and, and it's going to get fixed properly. When it comes to finding out the, difference, the differences between the two, um, that's generally what you're looking at. Is it more of a crunchy grinding sound? Then you're looking at more of the cartilage on the end of the thigh bone and the back of the kneecap. If it's more of a single pop that happens each time you bend your knee and straighten your knee, then it's probably more meniscus. That's generally what happens. It's not like a hard and fast rule. It is not black and white for sure. But what's causing this problem is I think the answer that you're looking for. And the good news about it is that it's usually the same root problem that can cause both the meniscus problem and the cartilage problem behind the kneecap and thigh bone. Usually there's an imbalance or there's some chronic injury that's been developing over time that's causing pressures to go inappropriately through the knee joints and it's wearing down either the, the cartilage behind the kneecap on the thigh bone or the, the way that the, the thigh bone is sitting on the shin bone, this upper bone and the lower bone, is rubbing the meniscus wrong. There's things rubbing wrong is the most simple way that I can put it. And that needs to be addressed so that over time you can take those bad pressures off and allow your cartilage and or meniscus to heal properly. And you need to just fix the movements and move better. You need to get stronger in the right muscles so that you're not out of balance. There is no medication that will fix this. Um, it's, there's experimental procedures out there that can theoretically regenerate cartilage or meniscus tissue, which is also a type of cartilage, uh, but nothing's 100% proven and 100% successful. There's things out there like regenerative medicine um, where they do PRP injections, platelet-rich plasma, um, stem cell injections is another one, of course. And uh, personally, as a specialist physical therapist, I've seen people that have had those types of treatments and it's mixed. Some people report that it improves their situation quite a bit and some say that there's no difference. I have not seen anybody though say that it hurts them. That's been my experience. This is all new stuff in medicine and it, it's not proven yet 100%. Um, but what we do know for sure is that cartilage, whether it's the knee cartilage back here or the meniscus tissue between, can heal. Meaning, just like your skin can heal if you cut it open, if you've got a cut on your skin, you give it some time and it scars down and, and then it, it closes up and you're fine, you can get scar tissue on your cartilage, on your meniscus. That's a good thing because that scar tissue is going to be 70 to 80% as strong as the original tissue, which is great. And you may be thinking 70%, I'd rather go get some stem cells put in and get tissue that's 100%. Well, the likelihood of the stem cells actually working is kind of up in the air right now. I'd say it's 50-50 or less probably. So healing that root problem is a bigger deal. And then I would have to say this, if you do go get the stem cells and it's successful for you, which is fantastic, it's a pretty penny to get stem cells injected. Um, then you have to ask the question of how did I get the meniscus tear or the cartilage damage before that led up to, the, to me getting these stem cell injections or this platelet-rich plasma injection. Because if that problem isn't fixed, then the fix that you just made with the stem cells is only gonna last you so long because you might still have that underlying root problem of the, the movement, in, the um, muscle imbalance, or the way that you're moving is not well. And you're, it's just a matter of time before you wear down those newly put on stem cells or the, or the, the effects of the platelet-rich plasma has now gone away because you never change the way you move, you never change the way you strengthened and you're just ruining the procedure that you had done. So fixing the strength and fixing the way that you move is number one in my opinion. It isn't a quick fix, it doesn't take away the pain immediately, but it sets you up to have long lasting pain relief 
and protecting your joints from getting arthritis and other worse things that might require you to have some major surgery later on, like a knee replacement. So I hope this helps. I hope you understand the difference between normal knee cartilage as the medical field describes it, which again is right here, and the cartilage behind the kneecap, and the meniscus tissue right between the bones right here. Um, I hope this picture helps. Let me show it to you one more time. And then I'm gonna talk about how you can start to fix the root problem. So remember the red is the knee cartilage and the orange is the meniscus tissue. Now, if you're looking for exercises to fix this meniscus problem or your knee cartilage problem, this video is not intended to show you exercises, it's just intended to explain the differences. But I've got a video that I made that's linked in the description right here that covers the top five hip exercises that you need to be doing to fix your knee problem. Go check that out. Now, if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and also subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the other future videos that we're gonna be putting out every single week. Thanks so much, and we'll talk to you guys next time. Bye-bye.